What's up, YouTube? I'm Evan Arking, aka the Art King, and I'm back doing another time lapse painting video. This time, I'm making a portrait of British actor Ian McKellen. I've discovered I like painting portraits of old people because I find painting older, more wrinkly complexions more interesting. When choosing a new subject, I thought no one would be a better, more epic old man than Gandalf himself. However, while searching the internet, I surprisingly wasn't able to find a high-res enough image of Gandalf to work from, but I was able to find plenty of high-res images of the actor who played Gandalf, Ian McKellen, so I decided this is who I will focus on. This is the image I will use as my reference. My previous portrait of Ragnar Lothbrok from Vikings was pretty ambitious, so this time I will go back to basics and just try and execute a straightforward but well done portrait. This is less of a character study and more of a demonstration of my technical skills. I will also mention that this painting will be for sale on my online store, where you can also check out more of my artwork. The link is in the description. Here I am starting the underpainting. I didn't really have a chance to go in depth about this part in my last video, so I'll go more in depth about it here. Using raw sienna, I will map out the values of the image by using different levels of paint thickness. Basically, where an area is dark, I use a thick, more opaque layer of paint, and where it's lighter, I use a thinner, more transparent layer. This way, the white of the canvas comes through more where the image is lighter. You can basically think of this as drawing with paint. And of course, my cat Millie just has to jump in my lap while I'm trying to work. It's a good idea to do an underpainting for two reasons. First, it helps give you a solid foundation to paint on and helps block out the white canvas below. Without an underpainting, I find that the canvas tends to come through in more transparent areas. The other reason is because it helps you understand the values of the image before you ever start thinking about color. It's not 100% necessary, but it's good practice. the underpainting is done, I start painting in the background and will then start on the face by mapping out different general areas of color, starting with the shadows. Here I am just trying to get a sense of my color palette and won't think about any detail until the entire face is covered.
that the entire face is covered, and I have my palette worked out, I start work on the wrinkles on the forehead. I'm trying out a new technique here, where I paint in the wrinkles really harshly, and then lightly dry brush it to slightly smooth it out. I repeat this process several times to build up layers of complexion. Hey, Kira's back. I found this part of the face particularly challenging because I felt I was painting in the wrinkles far too harshly, making his skin look more like cracked porcelain. It will take a lot of work to get this part right.
Here I am trying out a new technique I've been meaning to try out for a while, glazing. By thinning out paints with a medium like linseed oil and glazing over dry areas, you can change the tint of color of the image without having to paint it over. It also helps to smooth out the detail without covering it up. This particularly came in handy on super detailed areas, like the nose and around the eyes, to make the wrinkles a little less porcelain-like. I can't imagine how you would do this using only opaque paint. favorite parts is adding detail to the eyes. Notice how simply adding the slightest highlights makes the eyes look so much more lifelike.
here I just go around and add an extra layer to the background to help thicken it up. Now it's time to focus on the hair. I'm using very watered down paints to help the paint flow better. I didn't notice this until I played back the video, since this happens too slowly in real time to notice. But look at how the highlights fade over time after they're painted. It's important to note how highly watered down paints will fade as they dry. I had an idea this could happen, but was pretty surprised to see just how strong this effect is after seeing it in the video. I'll end up letting the hair dry and going back over it with a slightly thicker highlight to help compensate for this. Now that everything is done, all what's left to do is sign my name. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me remind you that this painting is for sale on my online store, where you can also check out more of my artwork. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram. The links are in the description. I am also willing to accept commissions, so please leave me a message at theartkingmedia at gmail.com. Please like and share this video, and make sure to subscribe for more time-lapse painting videos. Thanks for watching.